Hello everyone, Christian and Rasmus here, and this is our first video together in a very long time. Over a year. Over a year. Uh, you know, that's how we started the channel, Mickelson Twins, mm -hmm. making YouTube videos together. Now we hadn't made it together, a video together in a long time. I know. And videos just aren't as interesting when it's just the one of us. Here we go. Here we go. Um, it's because we've been apart for the last seven months. Mm -hmm. I've been here in Hawaii. You've been on the other side of the world yeah. in Amsterdam. The only thing that could ever hold us, like keep us apart for seven months is a goddamn pandemic. COVID and then also some personal life stuff, but never mind that. Yeah. So, but next three months we'll be together at least. Get it. Yes. So have we said what this video is? Well, it's no. a Q and A video. It's a Q and A video. We asked for some questions. Uh, there were about 10 questions submitted. There were more than that, but 10 that we're going to answer. And let's jump into them. Now, before we ask the first one, I need to ask, how do people feel about this hairstyle? Well, first off, that was the hairdo I was rocking for a I long know, time. I know, I know. I, I'm trying I, to be like you. Yeah, I know you are. Um, uh, I mean, uh, you still need to work on it a little bit. It's just, are you, are you trying to grow your hair out? Perhaps. You should grow it out. Yeah. Um, I'm feeling I'll so help far. you how to use the hair I'm band so far, but I had to introduce it without it being awkward. Like, ooh, he's obviously he's got a new hairstyle. He's not even gonna mention it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. First question. Okay. How do you make sure your book will be high quality and not half-assed? So I feel like the reason why this question is being asked is because the assumption people have is that they're going to um, hire a writer, perhaps use a ghostwriting company to write their book. You know, provide them an outline, write the book, and then see ya. You know contact me when the book is done mm -hmm. and then you have the book and then you don't want that thing to be half-assed as if it's on the writer to create a book that's not half-assed mm -hmm. and that's where the problem is so the best piece of advice i can give you to actually create high quality books is to genuinely care about the content of the book that just imagine that you would put your own name on the book cover and that you knew that everyone in your family everyone in your network all of your friends would be reading this book would you then hire a writer to, to write a book for you, get it back, and then just send it off to them and not even have any clue about what's yeah. inside that book. So then I would ask the question back to you, if that were the case, how would you make sure that it wasn't half-assed? Hmm. You would read the book yourself, uh, and before the book was even completed, you would go through the book chapter by chapter as it's being written. Mm -hmm. Give your writer feedback. Write a super detailed outline. The thing is that even though you're having a writer write your book, for you, you're not doing the writing yourself, you're still working together with the writer. So I guess that's the simple answer. You're gonna be working together mm -hmm. with the writer, as you said, reading the book every chapter by chapter once as the book is being written, coming with your feedback, doing a, creating a well-researched outline. In the end, you know, overarching of all these things we've said is to actually care about the book and put in the effort and work together with the writer. Put that all together and your book will turn out phenomenally. Question number two. Question number two. All right. Can you please tell us your marketing strategy before and after launching books and audiobook? Okay, so the marketing strategy within publishing is not complicated. There's one thing that matters much more than everything else. You have book promotion websites, you have different things you can do, but there's this one thing that matters by far the most, and this is where you should be spending, in my opinion, all of your time. When it comes to selling books. Okay, right? So that is gathering reviews for your books. Yeah. If you spend all of your time on that and throw everything else out the window and focus just on getting book reviews, that is the best marketing strategy that I can give you. Yeah. So it's like there are a ton of things that you can do. Little, this will give a 2% boost, these little small percentage boosts, but the one that's going to give you like an 80% boost over everything else, even combined, is going to be just getting reviews for your book. Because when you get reviews for your book, people actually buy the book when they see it because it has social proof and that is a massive selling point. And when a book has a lot of reviews, it gets shown more by Amazon and by Audible. Mm -hmm. It rises up the keyword rankings and then people actually see the book and then when they see it, they actually buy it. Mm -hmm. uh, so while you could use book promotion websites to help promote your book, that's gonna take away from your effort of gathering reviews and the mm -hmm. reviews are more important. Now, if I had to put a number on how many reviews would you like on your book? I think the magic number is 100, 100 reviews. Yes. And you could do that in a matter of, matter, uh, in a matter of two months or so. Now, it's not super easy. This takes time and it takes effort. It takes a little hustling. And there will be a video upcoming soon 
exactly about how to get 100 reviews for your book within a matter of two months. Don't wanna talk about it here, but this is just to stress the importance of gathering reviews on your books. That's really the marketing strategy. That mm -hmm. should be your marketing strategy because mm -hmm. when you do that, everything else falls into place. Mm -hmm your marketing really should be about leveraging the platforms that the books are on, Amazon and Audible. And when you get the reviews, they market your book. This applies for your, your print book and ebook and Amazon and your audiobook and Audible. Yes. Now, there are Amazon ads as well. We're not going to touch on that. The, the point of this answer is to stress the importance of reviews. Mm -hmm. All right. Question number three. Question number three. Not publishing. Okay. How does it feel married? I'm sorry. How does it feel to be married uh, and have a kid as well? How does it feel to be married? Uh, it feels good. Yeah, it, fe great. it feels right. Mm -hmm. It feels normal. It allows me to focus on business and just building this life and not worrying about anyone else, just worrying about me and my wife. Was, and this, yeah, it feels good. Isn't it crazy? We're both 25 years old and we're married in 2021. People don't get married at this age anymore. And if you'd ask yeah, me, my, I mean, most ago, don't, most don't. Yeah. But I was actually talking to a friend and we were discussing... Um, whether it helps or hurts, uh, I'm not wearing my wedding ring because That's awkward. I'm in Hawaii and my, my skin is, or my body is like, uh, what's it called? Puffed up. I Puffed don't know. up, so what I can't fit my ring anymore. Yeah. So I need to get it resized. Oh, you were talking to a friend, what were they saying? Uh, we were trying to figure out whether it is beneficial or the opposite of beneficial <laughs> to be married <laughs> with regards to growing your business. I and think it's 100% beneficial. So on one side, um, it's time consuming because you have a partner that you do want to give time to, right? There's that. Okay. Right. Um, but if what? You, what, I'm just saying what's way more time consuming is being single and being worried about that dude that's and going just, out. That's exactly what I was about to say. I know it was, but, but if you're single and you don't have anyone in your life, you want to, you know, guys are, you know, you gotta do the thing. Uh, they're gonna go out chasing girls and spend way more time doing that. And that's what my friend was saying is the amount of time and just thoughts he spends on like, yeah, dude, I just got to pick up chicks, I gotta talk to girls, I gotta whatever. Yeah. Is way more than the amount of time that I would invest into spending time with my wife. Yeah, if I was single. Now sing this is true from a business perspective. Yeah, from yeah. a business perspective. Yeah. Right, I mean, if I was single, just completely hypothetical, I would probably be on Tinder swiping and shit like that and wasting my time. I used to be. And going out, nothing wrong with it, yeah. but it's just. It, but most of the time commitment is the thoughts of always needing that. Yeah. You know? the. The, the release, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the other part of the question was, what's it like to have a kid? So I have a son. Uh, he's seven and a half months. He's not here now. right now. No, no. Oh. I'll put, perhaps I'll put a picture on right there. Christian, you babysat him really today. You tell me what's it like to have a kid because you got to feel it just for like a few hours. Yeah. Uh, it's fucking exhausting. It's fucking exhausting. It's really exhausting. Uh, Luckily, my wife is just amazing. And a super mom. You know, and you know. I... I I do know this. When we eventually have kids, then it's only going to have like a live-in nanny who lives in our house and just can help take care of the baby because uh, it's a full-time job. Like we would not, I would not be able to work as much as I need to. And Charlotte as well would not be able to work as much as she needs to with a kid. Yeah. Now, of course we said it's exhausting. And like, oh, that's a bad thing. No, no, no. Having children is the most awesome, fun thing ever. Mm -hmm. Okay. He's so much fun and I love him so much. And spending time with him is the most epic thing ever. And I can't wait to take him down to the beach here in Hawaii and play with him in the water. We haven't done that yet. Um, so it's great. It's great having a kid. Yes. I remembered your code, so I unlocked it. And look how cute he is. Look how cute he is. Next question. Yeah. Yes. Uh, let's see. With audiobooks bound to go mainstream soon, you want to, you can answer this question. This is mm -hmm. kind of a weird question. How do you convince people audio... How, how do you convince people audiobooks are better than reading a physical book? Sorry, I just can't read. Okay, so uh, interesting question. Here's all I want to say. For people that don't know, within a publishing business, the book that you publish will be published, of course, as an audiobook. That's what people, you know, that's sort of the craze right now. Mm -hmm. But you're also going to be publishing it as an ebook and as a print book. So in the end, it doesn't matter which version of your book that they buy. You have to sell them on the content of the book, you make not the format. That's up to them that they have whatever preference they have whether they want to buy a print book or an audiobook. They don't need to buy an audiobook. But like, to be honest, uh, priced at like normal levels, they'll actually make more from a print book. I would rather, sale. would rather sell my print book yeah. than make more money than the audiobook. Yeah. Um, so uh, just it's irrelevant. Yes. Uh, next question here. 
how long does it take for ACX to approve of your audiobook? So to provide some context for people who don't know exactly what that means, when you when your audiobook is narrated and you submit it to ACX so it can be published on Audible live and for sale so people can buy it, then the Audible ACX team needs to review the book. They don't just put anything up. They need to like listen to it, make sure that it fits like some requirements. Look, look, thankfully. Okay. Thankfully, thankfully. Yeah. Yeah. People like hate that this is a thing. Yeah, no. Uh, how long does it take for ACX to like listen to it? review it and then publish it on Audible. And the answer gen generally is a few weeks, but you can shorten that. I got a hack for you mm -hmm. for people who want to shorten that time frame. If you work with an Audible approved narrator, this is what an Audible approved narrator looks like. They're not always more expensive. Typically they no, are. Yeah, they're better. Yeah. They're better. But uh, they'll have this Audible approved narrator symbol on their profile. If you work with them, your audiobook gets approved way quicker. Like Oftentimes, less than seven days to get your audiobook approved and live on Audible. Just work with an Audible approved narrator. That's a major hack. Major hack that could save weeks on the publishing timeline. Yeah. Okay, so uh, boring question, but pretty important. And we get asked it a ton. Next question. Mm -hmm. may, I, may I pose it? Yeah. What is your take on low content and no content book publishing on Amazon? Um, no content in particular, which refers to like notebooks journals yeah let's say explain what quickly what this is mm -hmm. a low content and no content book is it's a it's a style or it's a kind of book publishing that involves putting out books on amazon that are of low content inside of the book or even no content and you might be thinking how do you sell a book with no content it's such as a uh, a notebook mm -hmm. so it's literally just 100 pages of lines and it'll be, you know, format and style in its own way. Yeah, but then the only difference really is going to be, like, the cover, mm -hmm. where it'll say, like, a notebook for third-grade teachers. Yeah. And then the target audi audience there is a third-grade teacher who's going to buy it and just use that notebook. I have no experience within this. No, I have no experience but. within this whatsoever, other than that's your your face recognized or recognized my face. Nice, sort. cool. Uh, my opinion is that it's spamming out a bunch of books as opposed to focusing on creating something that actually is useful for for someone who buys this thing okay here, here's what it really is well it's a lot of people get into this publishing stuff with one goal and one goal only and they don't care how they reach this goal it's just make money at all costs they don't care if it's spamming on amazon they don't care if it's putting shit out there and all that they really don't care but it's the wrong way to go about it. You, <laughs> no one ever became successful long term with some spamming mechanisms or just make money <coughs> bullshit. Jeez. You know, it's about building a real business. And here's what a business is about: a business is about customers. So creating good products that customers like. And this just isn't that. And there's absolutely no skills being developed in the process of pumping out. I mean, I think some people pump out a hundred plus a day, low content books a day. I'm not. It's I don't mean spamming. they're selling copies. I mean they're creating new ones with like completely slight variations to these, mm -hmm. and then we'll have thousands upon thousands of different kinds of low content mm -hmm. books out there. Yeah. Again, I'm not so experienced at all within this. This is my understanding. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, people no. go about it in different ways, but. Now, as opposed to the way that you should build a publishing business, because that shit ain't a business. That's just like spamming Amazon and hoping that someone buys it and you make money. Mm -hmm. The way you should do it is by publishing real books for real people that they will actually read, they will leave a review on, they will share with others, uh, collect their email address, create more books for these people, even create other products for these people. A, a real business. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I believe yeah. low content or such no content book publishing is uh, you know, it's pretty like sexy amongst people like people talk about it people Be want to do it because press button <laughs> it seems like press button money making <laughs> right and it doesn't require much it doesn't re require right. any it doesn't Skills. require much m thinking yeah you know yeah. customer research uh, things like that yeah um, so those are my opinions clearly not a fan of it um, and if you disagree fucking sweet yeah um it's not because it like doesn't work or we're just trying to shit on something else. Mm. It's just not a real business. Mm -hmm. It's a short term thing. Okay, let's move on. But it's just, I hate people. <laughs> You're never going to be successful trying to just do some stupid shit like okay, that. Go. Next question here. This is my favorite question so far. 
How would you invest 10,000 euros within your dream to become financial independent? So when we're reading these questions out loud, we're purposely reading them back is exactly as they were asked. And a lot of them just, people don't take the time to grammatically ask questions correctly. Okay, so how would you invest 10,000 euros if you had so? Um, Can I take this? I could say the first thing that I would not do. I guess not. I would not invest it in Bitcoin. I would not invest it in the stock market. I'm not invest in these different methods of creating income where you're not acquiring a skill or building a business or learning uh, a way to create more money. Right. Acquiring a skill to make more money for yourself. Mm. And you know, Bitcoin investing is obviously, or crypto investing, is obviously very sexy because you put money in and it just <laughs> it blows up. <laughs> it blows up without you doing anything. <laughs> But even if you were to, to hit the jackpot, 20x your money, uh-huh. uh, invest 10,000, okay, now you have 200,000 euros within a week, right? Let's say that happened. You would have no way of making more money beyond that because you didn't acquire a skill in any sort of way. So yeah. the answer is I would invest it in some sort of business where I can create more money and more money over time and acquire a skill. Okay, my turn to answer this question now. Yes. So how would you invest 10,000 euros? I'm going to give you guys straight up the best answer. It's to... Invest it in a business. Okay. Don't invest it in stocks, uh, this other stuff. Invest it in a business. Stocks, these other whatever things can give, what, 10, 20, that would be really good. Annual return, 20% annual return. That would be fantastic. A business can give 1,000% annual returns. Per month. Yeah, sure, per month. So, uh if you're, if you're starting at the bottom and you have like some cash to invest, you have to invest it in creating a business mm-hmm. and invest it in one business. I don't really care what business it is. It doesn't have to be a publishing business. A publishing business is not the best business for everyone. It's only the best business for some people. I think it's one of the best businesses for a lot of people because it is something that a complete beginner with no prior skills can come in and learn the skills to actually build something successful. But for example, like building a tech company. Any beginner cannot start a tech business. Mm -hmm. Um, So I don't care what kind of business you create, but it has to be in a business. Invest in the business. Uh, One more point I want to say. Can I say it? So uh, when people talk about investing money, most people, entrepreneurs, you know, most people watching our channel, entrepreneurs, they think about investing money way too soon. So an average person who has a nine to five job they can invest some leftover capital in, I'm just going to say the stock market. That's probably the most simple one. And it's not a bad idea because they have no other place to put their money. Mm -hmm. It can sit in their bank account and get like, I don't know, 0.2% a year. And that's their next best option. That's the opportunity cost. Mm -hmm. So then putting it in the stock market, getting 7% a year is good. But when you're an entrepreneur, you have this machine that is your business that you can put money into and it'll generate 100, 200, a thousand percent ROI in a year. So the only time, uh, so what I'm saying is I think entrepreneurs, they want to invest their money, like not in their business, in like these other assets way too soon, way, 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 way too soon. And it's because they're listening to media that is for regular people. Mm -hmm. So your average person who has $10,000 sitting around, yeah, put it in the stock market because you're getting 7% rather than 0.2. But an entrepreneur should not put it in the stock market because you'd be getting 7% rather than 700%. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I really think people with a business should not, investing their money in things like this, should not even cross their mind until they have an excess cash reserve of it, at least at least like 200 grand bare minimum like the, more let, like 500 to a million dollars like let's say they've exhausted every opportunity to uh, invest, invest in, in their, their own business, business yeah. like reasonably yeah. and they just have leftover money that they couldn't even invest in business if they wanted to yeah that's when it makes a lot of sense yeah. to uh to invest in whatever yeah crypto, whatever but most people truthfully just aren't there yet mm-hmm. uh like you want to have the cash on hand for cash flow a lot of people you know have cash flow issues where the money in the beginning, especially, is the most important mm-hmm. money. So keep it for the business. Yeah. Do not put it in stuff other than that. Okay, next question. Last question, actually, is what's your, no- not business or anything related, what's your number one favorite thing that you like to do together? Oh, I like this question. What's your number one favorite thing you like to do together? So we, haven't, we didn't answer this beforehand. Uh, I mean, 
really everything. Yeah. Everything we like to do That's together. It. But number one favorite thing, I don't know if there was a number one favorite thing. I mean, we could. It's just, it's just, it, a, it, it, it's just a hangout. It's to have a drink together. It's go to the gym together. It's yeah. go to the beach together. It's do, it's do anything together. It's just do things together. So I mean, the, does the, that make sense? The best part would be doing, you know, what our favorite things are and just doing them together. Yeah. So for example, watching Nets games. Oh yes, huge, oh, huge yo, Nets fans. Yo, yo, Nets. Nets play in one hour. Let's get it. So we're gonna watch the Nets game together. Here's my Nets you know, logo tattoo. Um, going to the gym together. Uh-huh. Uh, hanging out at the beach, hanging out in the water, drinking a beer. Yes. Smoking like, some weed together. Oh, I enjoy watching that. Netflix, yeah. watching uh, Family Guy together. Oh, eating cereal together. Yo. Eating cereal. Eating yeah. food. Yes. That's one of the best things. Yes. Uh, yeah. Jet skis. We're going to do jet skis soon. Yeah. Answer is basically anything. Yeah. So that that's uh, perhaps wasn't very specific at all, but that's just, that's just true right there. So. Yes. Uh, those were the questions that we felt were reasonable, re- reasonable enough to answer. All right, that was fun. That was fun. I, d- I would like to do these more, and I also want to do it uh, having special guests on here. We have friends who do publishing and under, like, and under the influence. I like that too. We have some friends who do publishing who we'd like to also have on here to just talk with. Magic emoji, magic emoji, magic emoji. I always have to look around. Avocado, avocado. <laughs> If you watch this video to the end, spam the avocado emoji in the comment section and we'll spam it, spam it back at you. And the puking unicorn rainbow emoji. No. Oh, okay. That doesn't exist. No. That's no. It. Avocado emoji. All right. Um, if you guys enjoyed the video, leave a like. Any comments you have, uh, questions for the next Q&A, if you'd like, mm-hmm. subscribe to the channel. Besides that, love you guys. We'll see you in the next video. Mm-hmm.